Hi, I'm Paul Germain, your host for Smart Boating, and today we're with a uh, very experienced model boat collector, Fred Clausen, looking at some of the interesting model boats in his collection. Fred, this metal one that you've got here in front of us, what are some of the interesting aspects of that boat? Well, this is called the Radicon, and it originally came as a radio control boat with the transmitter, and uh, this one of mine is pretty well used, does not have the transmitter, uh, but it's the only time I saw one at a reasonable price, and I ended up paying, uh, ooh, I did pay $200. Okay. But there was one on sale on eBay about uh, six years ago for $2,500. So to me, uh, my 200 was a bargain. That was a good deal. Huh? And it's just a nice-looking cabin cruiser mm -hmm. uh, made in Japan, and the company is called TM, which is, stands for Trademark. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, probably the only time I'll ever get a chance to get this boat, so the condition oh, right? uh, really doesn't matter. And the, and the original literature, the brochure in Japanese, and the directions in English uh, are still with it. So I'm happy, and it came with the box also. So that's a rare bird. Right that's there. a rare bird, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, you've, we're going to move another sample in place here. Well, yep. You've been collecting for a number of years, haven't you? I have. Uh, actually, probably about 20 years. I originally was going to use them as uh, displays in cottages that we own until the kids started playing with them. And mm -hmm. I decided to uh, take them off the shelves and started collecting, and it's grown uh, quite a bit in the last 20 years. Yeah. So yeah. I'm having a lot of fun. I used to collect die-cast toys. Oh, you did? Yes, for oh. years and years. Okay. And uh, I like all the variations that they have out there. In the boat, yeah. So this yeah. is an interesting little metal cruiser here, outboard powered, uh, a little smaller than the model we just are. Yes. What, what sort of background is this? This was a plaything, as all these were supposed to be, but uh, it's a wind-up and still works. Came with a trailer. Oh, okay. And the engine, the wind-up engine is in the boat itself. The outboard motor really is the rudder oh, to steer right. it in the direction you want. Right. And it's... Uh, was it uh, nine and a half inches long, and it was uh, made in Japan, but it's just an unusual tin metal boat. Now this would have been what the late fifties, early sixties. Uh, maybe even the uh, middle fifties. Uh, yeah. I don't. I haven't seen a date on uh, manufacture on it. Yeah. But definitely the fifties. Yeah. Perfect for the bathtub, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Looks like another boat we've got here. I'm going to turn this around so yeah. people can see the the hull a little bit better there. Yeah. What's their background does this one have? Okay, this is a 10-inch one. It's the same type of thing uh, with the wind-up, still works. Oh, yeah. No, no trailer on this one. No. The runner's a little different because it's, it's in the back. It's not an outboard. It's more of an inboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting, it's number 68, but some collector somewhere went and had a card made up that shows uh, number 53, so there probably are some variations out there. Oh, right. Uh, but again, it was meant to be a bathtub uh, plaything made in Japan, but uh, no uh, manufacturer uh, known on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a kind of interesting little boat right there. Yeah. Missing the front light, uh, but not a lot of detail on the metal boats. They were just meant to be sturdy for the kids to play with. Yeah, and I bet they were. They were, yeah. yes. It's, it's still reasonable condition. Right. It's interesting the variety of uh, metal model boats that came along over the years. Uh, can you fill us in on the details of the blue one we've got here? This was very unusual. It's extremely heavy. It's about three pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no manufacturer on it. For a long time, I thought maybe it was a homemade boat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a very unusual uh, red, rudder gauge in the back and to set yes. the uh, rudder to go the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very basic, not a lot of ornamentation. It is missing one of the front scoops. It's got great uh, parts on it, but not very many. And there is a very large horseshoe motor under the front seats. This lifts out, mm -hmm. and uh, you can get to servicing it under there. But I have no I know nothing about it other than it's a heavy boat, and I got it about five years ago, and uh, I've never seen another one like it. Interesting. Very interesting. Now this one, we've got the box again with it, which is again a nice thing to have if you can. Yes. It's an interesting com color combination. You get orange, you get blue, you get yellow, you get red. <laughs> Very unusual colors. And it comes with its own uh, stand that's made by the Sakai people, mm -hmm. S-A-K-A-I. Yeah. And you can see their design on the front of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, they were known for the metal boats, and they did make some metal outboard motors that come on different boats. Okay. Uh, this is definitely a runabout. Uh, not a lot of ornamentation parts on it, uh, kind of basic. But it uh, is a nice package uh, with the, due to the colors. The engine is under the back. It is inboard. 
and it's under the back section here. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, and it's only what is it about ten inches long, yeah. and eleven and a half, excuse me, long. And about what year do you think this was manufactured, roughly? That is probably the mid fifties, also. Mid fifties. Yes. Okay. All right. That's an interesting boat. We've got one here. It looks like it's got a control to it here. <laughs> It's the original remote control. <laughs> it is, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, the batteries go in here rather than in the boat, so that means the boat is a lot lighter. Oh, right. Uh, it's got the on and off switch. Yeah. Uh, it does have a little man as a driver. Yeah. And it's a race boat with, uh, with the code F570 on it. It's considered a zoom boat. Um, it got has a big engine back big there. Big engine in the back. There's a piece of plastic there that uh, shows the engine. It's probably hard to see on the camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, the boat is uh, about 11 inches, and it's in very good condition. And there have been a few of them uh, on eBay. The manufacturer just has a K in a circle, and it's definitely made in Japan like most of the early tin boats were. Okay. And it, the cord is probably about a 10-foot cord, so you didn't have a lot of space to go uh, with it. Uh, but you never lost the boat. You'd hold on to it because the batteries are in there. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. I know you've referred... Uh, in times past, Fred, that you got involved with collecting cars, and it is kind of interesting because these are match sets of cars with boats, right? Yes, they're both sets are made in England, and uh, the purple set, it's a drag boat uh, made by Western Models, which otherwise known as PHT is the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and it was sold as a match set. And I had to have it because of my prior interest in the die cast. Okay. And the one in the back, the orange and brown, it's the Cobra boat. And it is an Oldsmobile Fiesta, uh, 1953 Oldsmobile mm -hmm. Fiesta. Mm -hmm. And that's made by Brooklyn, uh, also uh, made in England. But uh, the, the second one is a special because on the back trunk is a logo for the Brooklyn Model Club. Oh. And there were only 300 of these sets made. So I was very happy to get that. So it combines my prior interest in the die cast as well as my current interest in the boats. And I'd never split them up. Uh, the only way to get that boat is uh, with the car set and be a member of that club. Okay. And it is com it comes with the original boxes. Wow. So. Well, Fred, you know, in the world of um, model boats, things evolve, just like they do in other parts of the, the world. And... And they started using different materials, right? A lot of them started with wood, and then they went to metal, and then finally they ended up with plastic because it's so durable. It's got a lot of great qualities for a model boat. What's this one in here? Can you tell us a little bit about the boat and maybe a little bit about what was going on when this type of boat first started coming out? Well, this is a combination. This has a wooden cabin, mm -hmm. as you can see, the dark uh, mahogany, and it has a wooden deck, which is a light-colored, and the rest of it is plastic. And okay. it's a lap track as far as the... Uh, the plastic hull, oh, and yeah. uh, this is made by Union Craft. The ones in this series are all made by Union Craft. Is that a big name? Uh, that's a big name, yeah. and uh, we're a little unsure of exactly what year that was created. It may have come from another company that you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't figured out the transition uh, on the names, at least mm -hmm. I haven't, and mm -hmm. my friends. Mm -hmm. um, but this is unusual, first of all, because of the roof color. It's a very yeah. bright color for yeah. model boats that you haven't seen, really. Right. I think the wood uh, gives them a little more attention to detail than just all plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, again, mm -hmm. this is an inboard. You can see the on and off switch in the back. It yes. does have a pop-up. Uh, rear light and it does have an electrified uh, front light that all oh. work off the, the battery. Okay. And it's just in great condition. I don't think this was ever played with and it's 11 and a half inches long. Uh, just uh, to me it's unusual because of the color combination. I think the, uh, the light green uh, goes well with the mahogany. Yeah, it looks like an old Chris Craft or a Jersey Seaskip <laughs> in terms of the actual boat. And this boat's a smooth hull, what they used to call a carvel hull, as opposed to a lap strake. Okay. About the same size. Ooh, same manufacturer, right? Same manufacturer as Unicraft, and uh, about 13 inches. And uh, you can tell a lot of times on the manufacturer by the ornamentation of the parts. Uh, but again, uh, it, 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 it has the fishing uh, pole holders on the side. I don't have any fishing poles. Okay. It has the pop-up rear light. Right. And this has a special zoom outboard motor. Uh, I don't know if it works, mm -hmm. but when it did work, you would uh, have it hooked up to the batteries, turn the switch on, and when it go brrrr, it would give you the sound of the motor. Oh, it would? The, whole, it was the only one that ever has done that. Uh, it's 13 inches long, mm -hmm. and this one also is the uh, wooden deck, and it's interesting on this wooden deck because it has screws so that you can take the deck off and get inside 
without popping any rivets. Oh, uh, it makes nice. it a lot easier to uh, clean up the boat on the inside. Yeah. What kind of money to purchase a boat like this? This one, I have to refer to my notes. Uh, I got it back in uh, 2016, and I paid $52.44 okay. and got it from a fellow who, uh, who's done a lot of restorations, uh, and he does a nice job cleaning it up. I don't see anything that's been repainted. I just like the, it's clean and mo modern looking. Yeah, beautiful boat. Here's one. This is a, well, I think it's a little unusual because an unusual hull design. It looks like a, what they call a cathedral hull or double hull, if you will. Um, unusual to yes. see that. Yes. I, I think it may be the only uh, cathedral hull one that I have. It's uh, a very basic boat. It is an inboard. Mm -hmm. Again, it has the pop-up rear light on it mm -hmm. and the on and off switch. Yeah. Uh, very minimal ornamentation. Uh, it's nine and a half inches long. Mm -hmm. So it's not a fancy boat, but I'm pretty sure it was a price-driven boat so that they could get the small boats out to the kids uh, oh. without a lot of uh, confusion and understanding on how to run them. Right, but right. Just not as fancy as some of the other yes. ones, but uh, like you say, at a, at a price point, more, more kids could have fun yes. with it, I guess. Right. Yep. Some a lot of these would sell for under five dollars uh, back when they came out in oh, the sixties. Really? Yep. Yeah. 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 This is a. This is this looks like an all plastic <laughs> boat. Totally plastic. Still mm -hmm. has a little bit of scotch tape on the top from when it was taped into the package. Oh yeah. Um, but this has an out plastic outboard on the back, and it did has does have the name uh, Evinrude on it rather yes. than the Union Craft name. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, very sleek looking. And it's uh, 10 and 3 quarter inches long. But the big thing here is the design is a little bit of a rocket ship type boat, yeah. but all plastic. It's got a big ho hood scoop up there. On, looks yes. Like a, a big cowl, fresh air cowl in the front deck. And it's got seating for, I don't know, it's got a couple bench seats. And I can see in here it's got the little gas tank, which is actually yes. the battery the, now, right? Well, the, it's pl you get that's hooked to the batteries and that are in the front, the and that just makes it more realistic. Yes. And they added that. But it has does not have anything fancy. There's no electrified lights in the front, just, oh, uh, okay. just a basic boat, but yeah. sleek. Yeah. Well, Minecraft was another popular manufacturer of boats yeah. that included plastic and in some cases wood materials. Yeah. You've got a, it looks like a sport fish here. Yes, definitely a fishing boat. As you can see, it's uh, got the balcony on the front so you can pull a fish in, as well as got the spot for one fishing pole. I don't have two. Okay. But uh, it's 15 and a half inches, mm -hmm. and it is a plastic hull, but it has the wooden deck with the lines. Yeah. The front light is missing the uh, post on it, but it's in overall very good condition. It's mm -hmm. got the racing stripe on it. Mm -hmm. But the real key thing with this uh contraption is the uh, engines. They okay. are Landcraft engines. They're metal and they are not anywhere near as good as the K&O engines oh. but these are far better than the plastic engines and these oh. are going for a fair amount of money now. And it has the typical uh, uh, U.S. flag for the Marine with the anchor on it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, a great combination. It's very heavy with the two engines in the back and when you put the batteries in uh, it moves because of the speed of the two engines, but uh, it's got a lot to weight to push through the water. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's got a beautiful, awesome. beautiful shape to it. It's what they call a Carolina <laughs> flare. You see them down the, the south on the east coast. Yeah. Just and the, the uh, front window pops up, so you want the breeze coming through when you're riding. Uh, all right. That pops up. All right, you're all set. <laughs> all set. Now this is another Lang as well, right? Another Langcraft, uh, yes. the cabin cruiser, mm -hmm. and with a slightly different uh, blue Langcraft engine in a lot better shape than the other ones. Yeah. Uh, this one is... Similar hull shape. Similar hull shape, si the way the hull flares and the deck comes out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Different uh, configuration on the front as far as the cabin, and it has an unusual wood block set in the front for ornamentation. Yeah. doesn't serve any purpose other than drop, uh, blocking the view from driving. Okay. But it also, you can't see it on the camera, but it has the uh, uh, gas tank that operates uh, as the connection to the battery, right. and it has a little shift lever to put it. But another unusual part is the, the French flag. This one came to me from France, oh. and a lot of the companies would attach the flag of the country right. to the boat when they sold it uh, in uh, that country. And this one is nice too because it has the screws on the deck that allow you to get the hull off uh, more easily than uh, the one you have to pop the rivets and can never get them back on. Oh, that's nice, yeah. So. Yep, that came from France. France, yeah. How about this one, Fred? Where'd this one come from? 
That's a U.S. model for, it uh, came from Japan, but it was uh, built for the oh. U.S. market. It's one okay. of your basic economy models uh, for Landcraft. It's an inboard, nothing special at all on it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is nine inches, and it has the wooden deck and the lap strake hull. Yes. And just uh, the economy market to get the kids uh, into boating. And it's got the switch uh, in the back here, but nothing of overall special with it. So a little little battery in there and a little electric probably motor. A, probably a C cell. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very few, uh, most are C's and D's for the batteries and the boats. Oh, yeah. And the bigger boats, of course, have the D's or multiple of them. What kind of money for something like that? For? On the collector's market, mm -hmm. I paid uh, $30 for it. When it came out, it was probably three ninety nine or four ninety nine. Oh, is that right? But I got it uh, back in 06, so that was one of my first boats. It's been around 15 years. Is that right? And still in... Very nice condition. Very nice condition, yeah. This one's a little larger, but by the same manufacturer, right? This is Landcraft again, mm -hmm. and for some reason, the colors on this boat, to me, are real attention getters because mm -hmm. of the color on the hull. Mm -hmm. uh, on the back, it has a Landcraft plastic engine. I see that. And yeah. it's got the gas tank for the connection to the batteries. Yeah. Uh, it's in great shape. I don't think this one was ever played with. It's 12 and 3 quarter inches long. Mm -hmm. Also with the screws going, uh, holding the hull down. Yeah. It is missing the flag in the back. It, the, the base is there, and it's a special flag because it allowed you to tilt the flag. It has a spring oh, mechanism oh. and a notch in the back so you could tilt it, but I haven't found a replacement for it yet. Okay, it's got, I can see full instrumentation on the dash there. They yes. got little instruments and the steering wheel. They got seating for, it looks like at least four. At least right? four, yep. Yeah. 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 But it's, uh, it, it, again, I can't stress enough the interest in the, the color of the deck because I don't, I don't have any others that show the two different colors with the uh, the roundness and the lines of the mahogany deck mm -hmm. just impresses me. Mm -hmm. Fred, I know uh, model boats from Japan were very popular, yeah. but it wasn't uh, model boats weren't exclusive to Japan. No. And within your collection, you've got model boats from different regions of the world, right? Yes, we travel the world with the model boats, some yep. better than others. But this one in front of us now is a Hornby Meccano uh, boat. And it's made in France. It is a mm -hmm. typical cabin cruiser. Mm -hmm. It is all plastic. Mm -hmm. And it's unusual as far as getting into the inside of the boat because there are four little divots here that you flop down and then you can uh, get into the boat to, to work on the engine if you want. It is 14 inches long mm -hmm. and not a lot of uh, ornamentation on it. it. If it is, it's uh, plastic. There's no metal pieces on it. It's got okay. an on and off lever here. Mm -hmm. uh, comes with the original box as well as it does have the original uh, information. Yeah. And a lot of people know uh, uh, Meccano because of the erector sets that they made in England. So they are a worldwide company, but this particular item is from France. Interesting. How long have you had that one? That one, you got. My guess is about. Oh, wait a second. There's the tag. I've had it since 2006, and I paid twenty-four dollars. Love the paperwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've had it quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. Got this one here. This is a race boat, a three what they call a three-point hydroplane, I believe, outboard powered. So this would probably be the real boat. Would probably be ten or twelve feet long. Yep. Yeah. How about this one? This uh, I've had for quite a while. I got it from my friend Mark out in Minnesota, and uh, it came from him with the engine, but the boat originally did not come with an engine. It was uh, made by Lindbergh and is made in the U.S., as best I can tell, mm -hmm. and it does not have any windshield. It's got the V-shaped ornamentation there, but no windshield. Right. And pardon my fingers, I should have looked. Uh, my friend Mark got it for me for $158. Okay. And recently on eBay, there was one with no motor, and that was on for $260. Wow. So uh, I'm very happy because uh, I know my engines that come from Mark all work. I don't have uh, batteries connected up yet, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect, it's very, very lightweight. Uh, mm -hmm. Very, very mm -hmm. thin plastic, not like some of the other. Uh, the next one coming up is a kind of heavy plastic. Right. So if you have, with this motor, probably zip right zip along. Zip right along, huh? yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this motor, by the way, is uh, the name of it is Speed. I saw that on the side, <laughs> yeah, Speed. Can't have a better name than that, can you? <laughs> no. Now, this is a, again, well, this is a, it's not a three point, but it is a hydroplane. Got the water, the, the, the air comes in through the two hulls and lifts it up and makes it go faster. How long have you had this one? 
this one is about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's uh, 19 and a half inches long. Mm -hmm. And it's special because of the mercury outboard on the back. Yeah. To have a model uh, engine that size, it's about six inches tall. Uh, the model engine itself is collectible by the uh, outboard engine collectors. Mm -hmm. uh, usually you find the boat and the motor separately. I got mm -hmm. these together in the original box mm -hmm. and uh, it, comes, it came with the original uh, operating instructions too. So it was a complete package, but it's uh, very desirable uh, for race boat collectors as well as mercury outboard collectors. Oh, uh, very unusual. It is a little heavier plastic, not as thin as the, the previous one. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, built? Do you know where it was built? Was it built I believe US, it was. Or? It's made by KB Aurora, and I believe it was the U.S. But I, I'm yeah. not really it's 100 percent kind of, sure. Yeah. Now this is an unusual boat. Yeah. This is a Shuko. This is made in Germany, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the battery is under the front uh, engine hood. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a car boat, but it, yes. it, it's not an amphibious. It uh, it just looks like it to me. Mm -hmm. The uh, engine pops off the back. It's an outboard engine. Okay. It's 11 and a quarter inches long, and it's uh, it's known as the Shuko Electro Record 5555. Mm -hmm. uh, Shuko made a variety of boats. It is a plastic boat. But this one has a lot of detail, especially with the wood decking, uh, wood grain yeah. shown on it. Right. And it comes with the box. And uh, it's, uh, I think I've had it six or seven years, something like that, uh, came on eBay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's very unusual. And you can see how they pattern. That's that's like an early, well, late, late 50s motor, a big V4. Yeah. That's, and, they were big stout motors like that. Yeah, not like nowadays. And it, it has Shuko as far as a brand name, which, as I said before, a lot of companies do put their own uh, name on for the name of the engine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Fred, some interesting boats came out of uh, Europe <laughs> and the Med. And yeah. you've got one here from, what, Spain? This one is from Spain. Yeah, we're still cruising around the world on the boats. Uh, mm -hmm. This one is a wind-up. Uh, all the parts are there, nothing uh, fancy. I do have the original box, but it's a little beat up condition, yeah. but uh, doesn't look like any broken parts, but it is missing the uh, wind up key. Wind up. But it does have double rudders in the back, which uh, makes That's it unusual. unusual. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I've seen it before. It's the first one. That's, I believe it's my only boat from Spain also. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. And they take the detail right down to the dashboard. They got a little glove box in there and steering wheel. and You can do stuff. a lot with plastic. You can, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a lot of detail. <laughs> How about this boat? What's different about this one? This one is from Germany. It oh. did come with its own huge plastic display case, mm -hmm. uh, but we didn't feel I need to show it. Uh, this one is about 15 inches long, and uh, nothing fancy. It's all plastic, but it just, it's got the captain's wheel, which you uh, you may be able to see here. Yeah. And it does have a some kind of a radar arch at the top, but I'm sure there was something that went on top. And it does have an extendable uh, anchor line, so uh, you can you drop it in. You want anchor out there, sure. Yeah, but sure. No, no, nothing fancy on that one. Just a single, single prop. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. this, Hurricane, that's an interesting name. This is one of my favorites. Uh, very unusual because the outboard's on the back. It, it is battery powered, mm -hmm. but in order to insert them, mm -hmm. you kind of put them in the divot and then turn, and I that, that locks that. them in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got a lot of detail for plastic. It's a lightweight plastic. It's 19 inches long, yeah. and to me it's in great shape. Uh, it does come with the original box, which is in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, but we're... When did you get that, Fred? That one, um, a, a, probably eight or nine years ago, and I nine believe this ago. came in from uh, uh, Belgium. From Belgium? If my memory serves me correct. Wow. Yep. Here's the one uh, on the box. On Again, the box. the box is important if you can get it, right? Yes. Yeah. This this one came from France. Uh, it's a Canot Spe Sportster, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, get my notes here, it's 13 and a half inches long, mm -hmm. but the fact that the boat's with it, and it came as a set with the outboard, and it's in great shape. It's got fuzzy seats and oh, yeah. fuzzy uh, flooring in the back. That's a little different. And, and a detailed dashboard. Right. With a yellow steering wheel. Yeah. Very unusual. Very durable. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we've got one here. This is kind of uh, has a bubble top on, on the top of the cockpit. Yes. This is a REL uh, manufacturer. They're made in the U.S. Uh, oh. uh, back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And they they probably have 25 or 30 different boats. 
Uh, the engines I had to manufacture to keep them on, the, uh, the mounts have broken, oh, but mm -hmm. they're the original engines for the boat. Okay. Uh, very futuristic, probably uh, late 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, I believe, uh, 16, 17 inches long, and it uh, is unusual because there's no other boat that I have that has the, the bubble top on it. And actually, I can tell you in there, oops, sorry about the fingers, uh, paid $88 for that because I've never seen another one. That was back in 2006. 2006 and it's yeah. on the original display stand from the store showing the name of the boat and the manufacturer. All right. So that's a very rare model right there. Yes. Yep. yep. It's an it, overall, it's missing the and, uh, battery cover, but it does have the, uh, the uh, back hatch cover, but it's unusual. I have not seen another one of them. Well, Fred, it's hard to believe, but... Uh... Time to wrap up the show today. And, uh, you know, we've covered a lot of ground in terms of model boats and in particular metal boats and plastic boats. Yeah. Uh, very, very interesting stuff. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up the show? Well, I'd just like to sh let everybody know that uh, Collecting Toy Outboards and Boats is a site on Facebook, and there's probably 1,500 members that are there now. And that's how a lot of us connect with each other and sell things, and as well as eBay. And uh, the amazing amount of friends you can make on eBay. Mm -hmm. It is a unusual group of people, but we all have boating, real and uh, toy boating, uh, in common. So, yeah. and I just want to say thank you very much for coming again. Uh, this is our seventh show. Hopefully, everybody will get a chance to look at the other shows. We want to promote them too. We cover a lot of different boats in all those shows. We do. It's been so very it's interesting. Very interesting. Very different. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. If you have comments, questions, just want to watch another show, visit us at the website, smartboatingus.com. Thank you.